Do you ever wonder how animated movies involving water are made? How is it possible that a computer using order, logic, and binary ones and zeros can recreate the crashing waves, rolling clouds, and swirling smoke that we see in our daily lives? Today we're going to talk about fluid simulation and how we can make realistic looking fluids like water, honey, or even smoke. We can use mathematical equations to describe and approximate what happens in the real world. In part one of this video series, we explain the math and physics behind how computers visualize fluids. In the second part, we discuss how these specific mathematical equations can be applied to create realistic fluid simulations. The majority of fluid simulations are governed by a set of two differential equations, the divergence equation and the momentum equation. Together, these create the Navier-Stokes equations. Now, these may seem complicated, but we are going to break it down so you can understand them. First, let's break down the symbols, then we'll break down each equation. The letter U is the symbol for the velocity of the fluid. The Greek letter Rho is the symbol for the density of the fluid. The letter P is a symbol for the internal pressure of the fluid. Pressure inside of the fluid comes from how active the particles of the fluid are, as well as how condensed into one volume they are. The letter G is used for the force of gravity, but often includes other external forces, so it can also be referred to as the body forces. The Greek letter nu is the symbol for viscosity. Fluids like molasses and honey have high viscosity, meaning the particles of the fluid have very little variation in velocity to each other. As we can see in this video, the, the fluid on the left has the lowest viscosity, it moves closest to water, whereas the fluid on the right moves very slowly and is more viscous. Let's look at the first of the Navier-Stokes equations, called the divergence equation, and start with the velocity. The velocity is the speed and the direction of the molecules in the fluid. Velocity is a vector field quantity, meaning it has direction and magnitude for every point in space. The divergence describes how much vector lines spread out or close into each other at any given point in space. Now, our equation states that the divergence of velocity is zero everywhere in space. This means that our vectors in space can't point all away from each other or towards each other. Let's think about why. What would happen if the velocities of our particles did point into each other? Well, this would mean that there are particles running into each other and compressing the fluid, but this can't happen for liquids like water. So, our equation is just making sure that our fluid is incompressible. There are many ways to point the arrows in non-divergent fields, but whenever we simulate the motion of particles, we always have to make sure that we don't violate this property. The second equation is called the momentum equation. In physics, you may have seen this equation, F equals ma, which states that forces cause masses to accelerate. We'll be using this law in physics to describe how fluids move as it defines the change in velocity of a particle in the fluid by breaking down the three forces that cause the fluid to accelerate. By looking at the left side of the equation, we can see that it can be broken down into density and the derivative of velocity with respect to time. Density is mass divided by volume, and the derivative of velocity with respect to time is acceleration. This means that the left side uh, of the equation is essentially the force divided by the volume. The first element of the right side of the equation is the internal pressure gradient. Take a look at this pressure map, with the red as high pressure and blue as low pressure. These arrows will show you the direction and magnitude of high to low pressure, as that is the direction the fluids will move. In other words, the change in pressure at the current instance in time. 
The next force acting on the fluid is the viscosity. We can see this gradient squared, which is the Laplacian. In mathematics, the Laplacian is how far a quantity is from the average of the surrounding elements, in this case, fluid. This will ensure that a slow moving particle in the fluid and the faster moving particles will try to move at the same speed. This means high viscosity fluids will tend to stick to each other, meaning some bits of moving fluid will end up pulling the surrounding fluid with them. The final force acting on the fluid is the body forces. This is most oftentimes gravity, but will also include other outside forces, such as someone pushes the fluid. Primarily though, this is if gravity is acting upon the fluid. So those are some of the main functions which a fluid simulation can have, and thank you for watching this video. In the next video, we will talk about how these specific mathematical equations can be applied to create realistic fluid simulations through different algorithms.